I'm Richard Carlton, and in this video we're going to dig into container fields and digital document management in FileMaker Pro and FM Starting Point. Now in another video I discussed in length the business case for document management and FileMaker Pro. So in this video we're going to dive into more of the technical parts of containers and how they allow digital document management to work within the FileMaker platform. Now first off, let me explain historically the issues of container fields in FileMaker. We store all our digital assets in container fields, and historically container fields have saved all their information inside the actual FileMaker file itself. If an organization put lots of documents into these containers, a FileMaker file could grow rapidly out of control. The FileMaker file could get very large and begin taxing the FileMaker server as users would do searches or do sorts or the FileMaker server would run backups the performance would get slower and slower. Additionally as users would access an image in a container the entire image would be sent down the network to the user to review and this is just not efficient design or smart engineering but in the old days this is how FileMaker worked. Now back about four years ago a company called 360 Works introduced a third-party product called SuperContainer. That gave us the ability to start storing container type information external to FileMaker, which allowed us to keep our database files small where only we had our text and our data and our calculations contained in the FileMaker file. So the FileMaker file stayed small and nimble and our backups were quick and our FileMaker servers ran fast. So all our big, large container data was stored outside of our actual FileMaker file. This greatly improved the performance of our FileMaker server and the performance of our database as a whole. But the engineers of FileMaker have gotten smart and they've incorporated a number of important features into the FileMaker platform that allow for smart and efficient digital document management and that's what I want to discuss with you today. Now first off I have a copy of FM Starting Point here and I'm also using FileMaker Pro Advanced. I'm going to go ahead and drop into my context module right here and I can see that I have a container field right here. Now a container field first off stores all sorts of data. In fact you can think of it as the kind of field that you're going to use to store everything else. So for example we have text fields here, we have date fields that can store date information down here, we even have time fields, we have calculation fields, we have all sorts of things. So a container field stores everything else. It stores pictures, it can store PDFs, Word documents, it can store sound files. If you're in FileMaker Go on a, a mobile device it can store signatures. It stores everything else that's not a text or a date or a calculation. Container fields are just that. They're containers. And in recent years, they have become a very powerful part of the FileMaker platform. Now, beginning with FileMaker 12, there are a number of powerful features with containers that make them even more useful. So let's take a look at that. First off, I'm going to go to File, I'm going to select Manage. I'm going to go over to Database. And here is my Manage Database window right here. I'm going to go ahead and look at all my fields for my Contacts table here. And I can see that I have a number of text and calculations and date fields. But I want to go ahead and find that field that contain the image of our contact. So I'm going to go ahead and click the header for Type of Field. And that will cause all the similar types of fields to sort together. Down below here, I have our container fields grouped together. And right here is our photo of our contact person. So across here, I can see that the type of field is container. And what's interesting are the options for the container. Now, of course, auto enter has limited value. But what's interesting are the storage options. And these were largely introduced in FileMaker 12. Initially during development the engineering team at FileMaker called these remote containers and for a lot of us that term has still stuck around. 
and you'll hear us frequently refer to these as remote containers. So you can click this option right here and that will take the data that's stored currently internal inside of a FileMaker database and it saves it in a directory structure in some folders outside of the database right next to the database but it's outside the database. This actually improves the performance of the database. Now you have two options. You can actually have it secure storage where FileMaker encrypts those files next to the database or open storage where it saves it next to the database but in a storage format that allows you to go in and actually visually inspect those documents. I can select OK. I can select OK again and FileMaker is going to tell me, uh-oh, we've made a change to the storage options for a container field. Now it's going to go through a conversion or transfer process. Now, what I want to show you real quick right here is that here we actually have our copy of FM Starting Point and at the moment all the container information is stored within this file. Once I click transfer, it's going to create an external folder with all this container information in it it's going to move the information out of the FileMaker file into this folder structure and then it'll be referenced in this folder. It'll make this FileMaker file smaller but this smaller FileMaker file will run much faster. The transfer process is actually pretty quick. Now FileMaker has just created this directory called files. I can open it right here and I can see that it created this structure right here. So I can see that it created these images right here. And so for example, we have this picture. Now the consideration at this point is as you move this FileMaker file, this file directory structure right here has to move with it. So instead of moving a single FileMaker file around, you need to move both the FileMaker file and this folder of remote containers with it. If you fail to move this folder of remote containers, you're going to break all these images here and they'll no longer display. Now this process works both ways. If you want to transfer the images back inside of FileMaker, simply go back to Manage, Database, go back and find the field. Notice here that the container now has external storage with open, non-encryption, we can select options, we can select storage, we can go back and turn off the external storage. We can select OK and OK once more. And FileMaker is going to transfer those images back inside. Now at this point all these images are back inside. FileMaker has not removed this directory structure here but I know that it's no longer being used so I can take it and go ahead and delete it. Now everything is self-contained, very simply, back inside this FileMaker database. So once again, the good part is that it's all simplified back in this single file, but if we have lots of images and lots of containers, this FileMaker file is going to grow fat and large and out of control, and it's going to make the performance of the FileMaker server and the performance of the users very poor. For databases that heavily use containers, where you have lots of scanned objects, like scanned contracts, you want to strongly think about using containers with external storage.